The importance of energy use by tractors on farm cannot be overstated. In 2012, crops represented 47% of the production value of Australian agricultural commodities. And, in the case of dryland cropping, diesel, as used for tractors and vehicles, makes up almost the entire expenditure on energy. In fact, for the average broadacre farm in New South Wales, fuels, oil and grease make up one of the top five cash costs for the average farm. And if we look at direct costs only, they become the third most important cost of production after fertilizers and repairs and maintenance. This illustrates that the savings from increased fuel efficiency are potentially massive. Although there is no magic bullet to reduce fuel use, the New South Wales Farmers Energy Innovation Program has researched and consulted with industry experts to identify some of the most important steps that can help farmers save fuel. Key measures lie in operator behavior and in optimizing tractor setup with the potential to save over 36% of fuel used on tractors. In this video, we explore the issues and listen to commentary from tractor expert Mark Francis for the best tips to reduce your fuel use out in the paddock. Selecting the right machine can be difficult and compounding this problem in Australia is the issue that a lot of the specifications and information available is for tractors within the context of European or American conditions or for the machines that they use. A first step is to identify the required horsepower you need from the machine you will purchase. But even at this point we have to be aware of caveats. People say I want a 100 horsepower tractor. They say I want a 200 horsepower tractor. Well. That's very well, but is that 200 ho engine horsepower? Is that 200 PDO horsepower? Is that 200 rated horsepower? Is that 200 maximum horsepower? Is that 200 boosted horsepower? The whole area of power ratings is very difficult to understand to the, un to the newcomer, to the industry, and it really requires taking some serious advice from professionals. The primary task of a tractor influences the required horsepower of the machine. Farmers can follow a list of steps to help identify an appropriate power level for a new tractor. These are, identify your priority critical field operation. Estimate the time you will have available to complete this priority task. Find the work rate in hectares per hour. Determine the width of the implement required. Determine soil resistance. Determine power required at the drawbar determine the power takeoff power required, and then adjust for further considerations. These steps are explained in information papers and calculator tools developed by New South Wales Farmers. They can be accessed from the New South Wales Farmers and Ag Innovators websites through the links provided in this video's description. Another important consideration when purchasing a tractor is making sure to buy any ballasting weight that may be required, as it is typically cheapest to buy ballast together with the machine. A lot of people have varying opinions about weight of the tractor. There's some rough rules of thumb. 23, 25 horsepower a ton. Four tons is a 100 horsepower tractor. Now you do have to consider what the task of the tractor is going to be. Obviously if this tractor is a boom spray tractor, we don't really want to run it at four ton. We might want to run it a little bit lighter weight. So take into consideration the use of the tractor as well. We now consult the brochure, we talk to the dealer, and we actually estimate what the real weight of the tractor is. We might be looking for four tonne, but the tractor might be 3.6 tonne. In that case, we're looking for an additional purchase of weight, and the cheapest way to buy weight is with the purchase of a new tractor. It is also important to be aware of how to add and distribute the weight on your particular machine. We can see that our rear wheel is drilled to take weights. So if we know the weight of the tractor, <clears throat> we can work out what type of weights we need to buy with the purchase and where to put them. Knowing the weight of your tractor will also allow you to address the next purchasing decision, tires. In recent times, we've seen the introduction of newer tire types. There's been massive changes in tire technology over the last 10 years, and it really is an area that requires specialist advice. There are two distinct types of tire construction bias ply and radial ply. Radial ply tires are the more recent type, introduced in the 1940s, and they have become the standard tire type for most applications. Depending on conditions, radial tires show an advantage of 6 to 14 percent in traction, fuel efficiency, and reduced wheel slippage over bias tires. Another key consideration is tire size. In general, you should attempt to obtain the largest tires that your tractor and operations permit. 
This will allow you to improve traction performance by employing a wider range of pressures and maximize traction and efficiency. However, farmers should also take into account the requirements of their own operation. Your dealer may want to offer you standard wheel equipment and that may well be suitable for the task. But you might be operating on very sandy soils, in which case you'll need a wider tyre to spread the load of the tractor. You might be operating in a row crop situation, in which case you'll need a narrower tyre to reduce crop damage. So this is the time when you decide, what tyre equipment do I want? It's the best time to buy it because tyres are extremely expensive if you buy them after market once the tractor is delivered. Another important purchasing decision involves the accessories that allow you to measure and analyse performance. Most of the major manufacturers will provide a standard or an optional dealer fit accessory for some form of onboard monitoring in the cab. I regard these as options but today I think one standard piece of equipment should be a radar. If you buy nothing else, and it's your main tractor, consider putting a radar on the tractor. A radar can be used to determine the true forward speed of a tractor and to compare the speed against the rotation of the tires. This allows us to calculate one of the most important variables to assess the efficiency of traction and correct operation of the machine, wheel slip. And later on when we talk about setting the tractor up, it's this wheel slip factor which is critical to getting the best from the tractor. Many operators may mistakenly believe that 0% wheel slip is optimal, but this is rarely the case for most field operations. Only in certain situations, such as when transporting a tractor on hard surfaces, like a road, is 0% wheel slip desired. On the paddock, some level of wheel slip is required. For one, slippage must occur to rearrange soil particles and increase grip. This is analogous to how a person pushing a vehicle over loose sand first needs to slip and compress the soil to attain grip. In general, too much or too little wheel slip are both undesired outcomes. Too much wheel slip means excessive rotations wasting fuel without providing useful power and reduced tire life due to tires wearing out abrasively. Too little wheel slip means increased wear and reduced drivetrain life as the tractor has no buffer to ease heavy loads and is an indication of an overballast tractor which may be holding excessive weight and therefore wasting fuel. It is important for an operator to know what the suitable wheel slip should be for the operation that he is conducting with his machine. As always, it is best to consult your operator's manual or your vendor for guidance. New South Wales Farmers also has information via the information paper Monitoring Wheel Slip to Achieve Fuel Efficiency, which is linked to in this video's description. It is important to observe wheel slip in order to determine how best to adjust the setup of your tractor. A sensible approach involves adjusting ballast to achieve goal weight, observing wheel slip and the results in the paddock, then fine-tuning by adjusting tire pressures. As mentioned in these steps, ballasting is where the process begins. What can you as an operator, owner of a tractor do to maximize its efficiency in the field? First of all, adjust the weight according to the task. I tend to see uh, a lot of people today who never ever remove or add weights to a tractor. It comes the way it comes, they leave the weight on and they drag the weight all around the farm for 365 days a year and it costs them a lot of money. The ballast setup process is conceptually simple and involves the following steps. Consult your supplier and the tractor manual, identify your gross goal weight, identify the goal weight distribution by axle, measure the actual weight and its distribution, precisely adjust ballast to achieve goal weights, and then observe results in the paddock and fine-tune by adjusting tire pressures. So we might say, well, we need 400 kilos of weight. We then decide, where are we going to put the weight? We could stick it on the front of the tractor. Here we can see the mount point for the front uh, weights of the tractor. Or we could stick it on the rear of the tractor. Now, how do we decide where to put the weight? Well, standard weight distribution should be around about 60-40. 60% of the weight on the rear axle, 40% of the weight on the front axle. If operators are changing to different field tasks, or if they observe very low or very high wheel slippages, then an assessment of the appropriate ballast level should be undertaken. And, if necessary, according adjustments to meet these levels should be made. I'm out and I'm pulling a plow, and I've got 2% wheel slip. Basically, the tractor's not slipping. What do I do? I remove some weight. I want to see that tractor slip a little bit. 
That's the way I can guarantee I'm getting maximum fuel efficiency. You can visit the New South Wales Farmers information paper on tractor ballasting for more guidance and methods to ballast your tractors. One of the most important steps to improve the performance and efficiency of a tractor involves proper management of tire pressures. But there's one really, really simple thing you can do, which I see grossly neglected across the whole entire country. And that's check and adjust tire pressure on a regular basis. Tire pressures are often set and forgotten, but many farm machines operate under a wide range of loads, speed and ground surface conditions. Adjusting tire pressures to account for these differences can result in fuel savings in the range of 5 to 30 percent. In general, tire pressures should be low in the paddock and high on the road. Lower tire pressures on the paddock will improve traction and therefore improve fuel efficiency. However, pressures that are too low can wear and damage tires. There is a balancing act between tire life and traction. So, as always, you should refer to your tractor's manual and to your tire's inflation chart to ensure your tire pressures are appropriate for the speed and weight on each tire. Pin these charts inside the cab and train and motivate staff to ensure that they understand and check tire pressures against these guidelines. There are also some rules of thumb that may be applied as a last resort. But there's some rough rules of thumb which give us a very good indication as to whether we're at the correct pressure. Now this is a radial tire. Any tractor you buy from North America or Europe today will be on radial tyres. How do I know if I'm about right with pressure? I count the number of lugs in contact with the ground. And I need to see at least two lugs, and for maximum traction, three lugs, firmly in contact with the ground. That's a rough rule of thumb which tells us we're close. We might not be 100%, but we're certainly at 80%. And 80% is better than what I see most tractors today. Now, <clears throat> if you have an older tractor, and she's on rag tires, bias by tires, please don't obey, obey that rule. <laughs> okay, a rag tire needs a good solid upright side wall. You will suffer severe tire damage if you try and run with three lugs on the ground with a rag tire. Studies in Europe identified that one of the best ways to improve tractor efficiency is to ensure that tractors are operated correctly and methods such as gear up, throttle down, are implemented where appropriate. There's another area where we can provide a very, very simple tip for saving fuel. And that's the way the operator uses the throttle. Now, gear selection and throttle operation are critical to fuel efficiency. And we can see savings of 10 to 20 percent in fuel efficiency just through operating the throttle properly. Gear up, throttle down basically entails using the highest gear that the machine will allow without overloading the engine and decreasing the throttle. This can be an especially effective way to reduce fuel consumption in cases where a tractor is underloaded. However, there are some limitations to this method. Most obviously, you must be careful not to overload the machine. Black smoke or engine lugging noises are an indication that you should revert to a lower gear. Another way to check if you're on a gear that is too high is to check the throttle response. When increasing throttle, the machine should respond with an appropriate speed increase. If this is not occurring, then maybe the gear is too high. How do I know if the operator has set the throttle correctly? Very simple. The tractor needs to run at 80% load for maximum efficiency. Back the throttle off to two-thirds opening does the tractor maintain correct operation? Yes. Then slowly increase the hand throttle and watch the engine's tachometer, its speed, rev counter. If the rev counter increases slowly, the tractor has additional power. It's operating correctly. If you open the throttle and the tractor is dead, it's lifeless, it doesn't increase in engine RPM, it is plain overloaded. The other thing I've noticed is there is a tendency to run the engine RPM too high. The modern diesel engine works most efficiently between 1400 and 1800 RPM. When we're undertaking primary cultivation, it's very often a good idea to run that engine at around that 1600 RPM range and that gives us the fuel efficiency we're looking for. Another essential measure that must be implemented to ensure the efficiency of a machine is retained is a planned maintenance regime. There are dozens of components that must be looked at at different intervals. The New South Wales Farmers Association recommends that operators and managers develop a schedule and a strategy to track maintenance work. An effective farm fuel efficiency plan starts with documented the when, where and what of fuel usage. 
Good record keeping and accurate fuel input cost data can help to refine cost benefit calculations around cultivation, agrochemical application and harvesting decisions. Good fuel use records for your major vehicles can pay off in many ways. Tables, such as this one, can help you to keep track of fuel use by your tractors during varying jobs and conditions and identify when certain conditions or a particular change in the tractor's setup contributed towards increased or decreased fuel consumption. Paper records should also be backed by additional digital records and supported by telemetry systems if these are available. And remember, it is important to pay attention to the right metrics to judge whether a job is being performed efficiently. Now I guess the last thing, and I see this quite regularly, is how do we actually assess how efficient the tractor is? So many operators today say, how many litres per hour will this tractor use? Well, to be honest, it could be anything between three litres at idle and say, for example, a 350 horsepower tractor, she might take up to 62 litres an hour at full noise. The reality is that number is completely immaterial to you as an operator. There's only one figure you need, and that's litres per hectare. That's the amount of fuel used to cover one hectare of operation. Because when we cost production of the crop, that's an input. We can directly input litres per hectare to tell us what that crop cost to produce. We then offset what that crop actually produced in financial reward and we now know our profit and loss. Efficient operation and setup of tractors represents a substantial opportunity to tackle energy costs for many broad acre farmers with potential savings of more than 15%. New South Wales Farmers has developed a suite of information materials on various aspects of tractor efficiency that may help you to identify and implement some of these opportunities. You may find these materials by visiting the New South Wales Farmers and Ag Innovators websites through the links found in this video's description. For even more information, feel free to contact the New South Wales Farmers Energy Innovation Team.